Bitcoin ATMs in the U.S. and Canadian Senate. Carpellus dodges jail and the heartbleed bug is squashed. Hello, I'm Jared Kenna and here's what's happening today in money and tech. Peer-to-peer -peer Bitcoin lending platform BTC Jam has shut down after it was discovered Bitcoins were being stolen from customer accounts. The heist appears to have been enabled by a heartbleed bug vulnerability. The address collecting the stolen Bitcoins was also used as a donation address for another site and the hacker has been reportedly identified. BTC Jam has yet to release any public statement regarding the heist or the potential Heartbleed vulnerability. Meanwhile, the Heartbleed bug has been fully patched for Bitcoin businesses thanks to a maintenance release of Bitcoin Core version 0.91. According to his attorneys, Mt. Gox CEO Mark Karpelis is apparently nowhere to be found. As his U.S. court date approaches, lawyers involved in the U.S. case believe it unlikely that Karpelis will show it all for his hearing, considering he will likely be arrested as soon as he sets foot on American soil. Echoing the rumors in China, National Australian Bank has notified its customers who deal in Bitcoin that it will be closing their accounts effective May 2nd. Several businesses have already received notification from the bank, stating that digital currency providers pose an unacceptable level of risk both to our business and reputation. This decision comes as a surprise, given that the National Australia Bank was previously one of the most proactively Bitcoin-friendly banks. As Dogecoin and Litecoin have become more popular, the security risks for their mining have also increased. So Charlie Lee has suggested a solution. He proposes merging mining for the two altcoins, which would make a 51% attack almost impossible. And digital gift card company eGifter has partnered with GoCoin to add payment options for Dogecoin and Litecoin for its almost 200 major U.S. merchants, who include Amazon, Gap, and Walmart. GoCoin founder and CEO Steve Beauregard is excited about the new partnership, saying, Together, we are building bridges between retail shopping and digital currency communities. Bitcoin ATM company BitAccess announced that they'll be appearing before the Canadian Senate Standing Committee on Banking, Trade and Commerce today, hoping to educate the Senators about their ATM's unique capabilities and Bitcoin's accessibility in general, while also helping the Senators purchase some Bitcoin of their own. This news comes immediately after Washington, D.C. welcomed the RoboCoin team and ATM in a presentation to Congress on Tuesday. One of the first to use it was Representative Jared Polis the congressman behind the satirical call for a ban on the U.S. dollar, who eagerly bought his first $10 worth of Bitcoin while fellow members of Congress looked on. Going through RoboCoin's extensive three-step authentication process, Polis quipped that the currency of choice for those seeking to engage in illicit activity is still cash. And German startup BitX ATM has entered this increasingly crowded space with their new Bitcoin ATM, which serves as a point-of-sale machine as well as allowing for the usual purchase and sale of Bitcoin. Renowned economist Susan Athey has formalized her role with Ripple Labs, officially joining its board of directors on Tuesday. The Stanford professor of economics said she is excited about the future of the company, envisioning a world where money will flow through a digital network like Ripple that empowers individuals and institutions alike to instantly and seamlessly exchange many different types and items of value. Watch our interview with Susan Athey from CoinSummit on our website. Recently, our Money and Tech team traveled to Washington, D.C. to interview our nation's political leaders about their views on digital currencies. We'll be bringing you those interviews and more regulatory insights all this week. Those videos will be available along with more information on today's news stories at moneyandtech.com. I'm Jared Kenna, and this has been Money and Tech's Daily News Update.